How I Discipline Myself to Become Rich If you've been following this channel for a reasonable period, you might have heard me saying, you have to give up something to get something. It's the truth. I discovered about 16 years ago, and since I discovered this truth, my life has never been the same. So, starting this video, I'll ask you to do something very simple. Take a sheet of paper or use your phone. Then write the three important things you want to achieve in the next five years. Now that you've written three top things you want to achieve, the next thing is for you to write three to five things you're willing to sacrifice for those things you want to achieve. Since most people will be watching this video on their mobile phones during some busy days, 99% of people can't possibly do the above exercise immediately. But you can do it later. If you do this exercise, you've done what most people in the world would never do their entire life. In my short difficult years on this planet, I have seen and met so many people, and the one thing I noticed again and again is that most people want to eat their cake and still have it. Most people want to make easy decisions and still have success. Most people want to do what is easy and still get a good result. Most people want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. Now, look at the seed of any plant. We need those seeds to grow and reproduce hundreds of their kind. But what do we do to achieve that? We bury the seed and let the seed die. It's only when the seed dies that it can germinate and produce in multiple fold. It's only when you die you can live, grow, and reproduce. It's only when you die to pleasure you can have the real pleasure. It's only when you die to the entertainment that you'll have real entertainment. It's only when you die today you can have tomorrow. My Journey of Self-Discipline The first time I knew what self-discipline meant and the reward it brings was when I was about 15 years. I was in secondary school, which most people call high school and I was having a conversation with two of my friends about who would become the best student in our class. At this time, I was only one of the average students, and I thought that those kids who did well in school were simply using their brains better. Now, I was having a conversation with my friends about who will be the best student in our new class. For whatever reason, I announced to my friends that I will be the next genius of the class, and as expected, they didn't agree with me. One of them simply mentioned the name of the guy he thought would be the next champion. I left that informal meeting with holy anger and determination to do something. I got home and lied to my father that I needed money. Lying is a scene, but I didn't know that time. My parents gave me some amount, and I went to the bookstore to buy books. Don't be surprised that I had to lie to my father to get the money to buy books. He was a stingy man. I bought books on all of the most important subjects in my class and I started waking up an hour or two before school to read. One day I woke up to read economics text and got to school. Then our economics teacher came into class to teach us a new chapter. Who can define the opportunity cost? she asked. After a moment of silence, I rose and defined the opportunity cost, which happened to be the very chapter I miraculously read a few hours ago. Good, my teacher said as the entire class clapped their hands for me. I looked back and saw that, for a moment, I was the hero of my class. I loved what it felt like to be hailed, and I would sacrifice anything to receive such applauses every day of my school days. And that, exactly, was my next goal. After the economics class, I started thinking about the whole thing. So the guys who had been leading our classes were thieves. So they secretly read and came to class to shine. So this is the secret. From that day, I kept using the same trick. I call it a trick because that was how I saw it then. I increased my self-discipline. I would wake up early to read, read after school instead of watching movies, and leave my parents home on weekends to go and read in a silent place. I became the best student in the commercial class, as we call it in my country. And since that time, I never attended any school without beating everyone in whatever class I found myself. I titled this video... How I Disciplined Myself to Become Rich, and then went on to tell you silly stories about my academic performance. How does that make sense? Just give me a minute. I'll show you the sentence in my stories. Leopards can change their colors. And not just leopards. Most animals can't. People don't change, and when they change, they still don't easily change. Success and failure are habits, and like most habits, it's highly addictive. 
Because success or failure is a habit, people who know how to successfully continue to succeed, while people who don't know how to successfully continue failing. After I experimented and saw how I rose from the average student in school to become an academic hero everywhere I go, I simply duplicated the same formula for my financial life, and the formula goes like: Know what you want, specifically identify what you have to sacrifice for what you want, and be willing to make those sacrifices. The above was the formula that made me the best student in school, and it's the same formula that made me rich. Planning my financial future as a young adult. I knew what I wanted. I wanted to have enough money to stop worrying about money. I don't care about becoming a billionaire or even a millionaire. I just wanted to have a large enough cash flow to make me live a very comfortable life while doing what I truly love doing. After I identified what I wanted, then I chose my battles. I knew I would have to sacrifice many things, and I was willing to bury my body so that it can die, germinate, and reproduce. Starting in business, I gave myself a decade to make mistakes and fail. This sounds crazy, and I often doubt if I was the one who had such a mindset. How on earth would you decide to fight a battle for ten years? How would you decide to go through the pains of failures, rejections, and poverty for one decade? I don't know, but that was my decision. I decided to read every book I could find, take every difficult decision and action I could, and discipline myself as much as I can. Most people think that they are weak and can't do difficult things, but that's not true. The reason why you think you can't do difficult things is that you lack the motivation to do difficult things. Yes, the difference between a soldier and a civilian is the motivation. The difference between those who take tough decisions and discipline themselves and those who are fearful is motivation, and that's why we created our new channel to motivate and challenge people.